monthly meeting. We are here to accomplish the business of schools for the sake of our students. We do want to hear from our citizens. There's time of public comment prior to our action items. On the agenda, we ask that speakers identify themselves in their home district. We also ask that your comments are limited to three minutes in order to provide equity to all speakers and to ensure our meeting is reasonable in length. If you have any uh, more information that can be summarized in three minutes, please provide leave behind materials for the board's review. The moderator will ask you to conclude your remarks as the time has elapsed. If you have questions during the session, we ask for clarification from your school board member or a school administrator after the meeting's adjourned. Thank you for coming. Let's stand for the pledge and our moment of silence. Kitchen, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. miss you, but we have a forum. <laughs> we will continue. All right, is there a, a, a motion concerning the adoption of the agenda? I move we adopt the agenda. I have a motion, Ms. Bottoms. Is there a second? Second. Second. Ms. Meyer, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. So a report from the student representative. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Hats, and we even got the trophy right over there. Uh, for which one? <laughs> <laughs> Put that mic up next to you. Is it on? There you go. Can you make sure it's on? Can you make sure it's on? Hey! Thanks, Mason. Okay, cool. Uh, the Leo Club had a road cleanup last Wednesday that I was able to participate in, and we were able to join with members of the Lions Club, and we were able to clean up. 2.5 miles of trash on Rockfields Road. The prom and after prom will be this weekend. It's rescheduled for this weekend because of weather precautions last weekend. The ninth grade is having a color run on the 20th this month at 9 a.m. for their class, just as a fundraiser. The spring musical is on the 21st and the 22nd of this month of a chorus line and is currently selling tickets. The 21st is at 7 p.m. and the 22nd is at 3 p.m. The senior banquet will be held on the 29th of this month at 4. AP testing will be starting early May along with SOLs and SATs. May 1st, interns will be sent home. May 3rd, uh, physicals by Dr. Miller and nurse practitioner Ann Miller will be held here for anyone that would like physicals for next year participating sport uh, by the APM. May 16th, the band will have a spring concert here at 6. Uh, May 19th is the Relay for Life that RCH, RCES is sponsoring. May 27th is Baccalaureate. May 28th, schools close for Memorial Day. May 31st is the last day of school and we get an early release at 12. And June 1st is graduation slash teacher work day, and summer school will start right after that. That's what I have for you guys today. June the 1st is a Friday. Mm -hmm. So it's a nighttime, nighttime event, 7 p.m., or what is it, 7? Great. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mason. All right, donations. Okay. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of donations for the after prom party. 
More, um, this is more than what you read last month. Yeah, this is yeah. And, and it's just way it's more. And so I, I called the high school today to get a total of the dollar amount. Um, so the cash donations were um, $9,150. And the total prizes were valued at $1,960. Wow. Yeah. So almost $3,000 total. Yeah. Well, a total of what? Um, oh, does that count? 10, 11, 12, almost 12. Twelve thousand dollars. No, eleven. Eleven. Sorry. That's great. Yeah, that's amazing. It's wonderful. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? It is. Step up. So a lot of donations. Yeah, yeah. So, but there were there were certain folks that were provoking mm -hmm. these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> our sad group and um, oh. our sad sponsor this year is Janet Roby. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they've been out there and doing. Working with the community, so we're so thankful. It's amazing, Thanks. so much. Great, thanks. All right, there are two sets of minutes uh, in our attachments. One from the March 13th regular school board meeting and public hearing that we held, and the other was a work session on the 23rd. Is there a motion concerning the adoption of these minutes? Who so moved? We have a motion from Mr. Grove. Is there a second? A second. And the second was by. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. And so ordered. Um, Mr. Grove, did you? I did. Yes, thank you. Verification. Checked all the bills and signed them off. And uh, I think we're going to uh, I talk with Stacy a little bit about doing some. Uh, there's some of the bills that are that are due for um, what do you call it? bidding. Ah, right. We're going to bid, go back to a. After four years or after three years, you read it. So gas, Fuel, peas and carrots, right. yeah, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're going to start that process this spring. Sorry. Well, we've already started on some of those okay. um, contracts, but yes, we okay. have a few more that we're evaluating for bid. Okay. <laughs> but they're all signed off and ready. To go. That's great. Thanks. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda, which was? which would approve the donations, uh, receipt of the donations, paying the bills, the attendance report, and the the loan of the bus for the fodder stack. Or two buses. Two buses. That's what we routinely have done. Did we pay the driver for that? Um, typically, in the previous years, I checked on this, we have um, a bus driver who had volunteered. Volunteers. Um, this time, I'm not sure that's the case, but in any event, we will work with the county to make sure it's that. Okay. I, I have a, want the nice to see the attendance report go up for a change. Yes. <laughs> yes. And secondly, I, I was nice to see that there's there were no there's no homeschool report. That's all good. Uh, you mean additions? Additions. additions. Okay. Although we did have some yeah, homeschool right. parents come in and tour the elementary school, so yeah. Yeah. that's well, that, nice. That's good. The other the third one is: We given any discussion or talk? Have you talked amongst yourselves about a, some kind of a, a letter we talked about or a survey mm -hmm. and that kind of thing? Yes, we're working on that in our communications department right now. Okay. Great. Is there a motion to then approve? I move. Uh, okay. <laughs> motion to approve the consent agenda. Did you move that? Yes. Larry, uh, Mr. Grove, and the no. motion is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Meyer. All in favor, aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed, no. Ordered uh, reports to the superintendent. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, our first item, I'm really excited to have Mr. Temple in his first school board presentation appearance um, come talk to you today about um, exciting changes at the elementary school um, and also some things he's looking at for next year. Mr. Temple? I am very honored and humbled to be serving as the principal at Rappahannock Elementary School. We have great families and great teachers. And it's just, it's a, been a great year, and I'm very excited to talk to you guys today about some things that are going on in our elementary school.
open this file, I think it's the file. <laughs> it's good to see you. Not be right back. That's all right, we're doing technology down yeah, here. Yeah, so you too? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so no, it's we not just, just me. Okay. We have to find no, it's a plug in. We have to do it. Handouts of your presentation yeah, if you fine. want to go yeah, that way for now. Yeah. So we'll see if this is going to come up. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. 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 Um, build relationships to kind of see what the staff is capable of, get to know the families, get to know the students, and again, like I said, I've been very, very impressed. Um, so I really wanted to work on just kind of seeing the atmosphere, building on that, um, working with morale, and kind of seeing what the discipline's like in our building. So with a um, atmosphere, um, some of the comments that staff have made um, were that they feel like we've done a great job of building relationships. Um, being visible as administrators in the building and being very positive and open to teachers. Some of the things that we've done um, to help with this is obviously having an open door policy. Um, teachers are um, able to come and see me anytime they need me. If I'm not in the office, I have a radio, they can page me and I'll uh, be real quick to respond. Um, I've tried to do as much as I can to get teacher feedback um, and opinions when making some decisions that we'll talk about later with scheduling. I'm sitting down with each staff member and giving them, letting them put in some input and kind of building that with where we want to go. Um, and then just trying to be an encourager. Um, I think we try to be positive. I think the teachers um, see that. I think the vibe in our building is very upbeat. Uh, for morale, some of the teachers have said that, they, that their input is valued, uh, their time is valued, and that their hard work is valued. Um, one thing we implemented early on this year just to kind of build that morale is a gem award where teachers can recommend or nominate a co-worker and then the co-worker that earns the award gets a, a designated parking spot wherever they like. It's movable. Um, they get a gift card from the cafe for lunch and then their picture is posted on the wall and um, teachers are very good about nominating. It's very hard to make a decision when you get 10 nominations every month coming in. but. Um, Teachers work hard and they need to be valued. Um, we have a gratitude jar that we just started the last couple weeks where it's, uh, we're encouraging teachers and families as they come in our building just to fill out a little card or something they're thankful for. And we're putting in that jar. We're going to do an activity with those at the end of the year at one of our staff meetings. Um, allowing teachers to have input is big. Um, teachers were responsible for the textbook adoption. I put it in their hands. Um, they went to the meetings, they researched, they got to sit through presentations and make a recommendation, and I left it up to them. They're the experts in reading. I'm not. I was a music teacher. Um, I know good instruction when I see it, but I really wanted them to have that input uh, of what they felt like they needed to improve the learning in our building. Um, and again, just getting feedback. Um, I'm big on feedback. I did a survey earlier in the year 
um, and have changed some things. Some of my approach is based on feedback from teachers. So uh, it's that open door. They, they have respect for me, I think, and I respect all of them. So um, For discipline, uh, coming in, just kind of looking at um, the reports from last year, kind of how things were handled. Uh, really decided early on this year to work on some clear expectations and you can actually see that in one of your handouts if you pick one up. Um, we worked with teachers and staff at meetings to come up with expectations on what we feel like we should see the kids doing in our building. We wanted the verbiage to be very positive um, and these expectations will be rolled out at the beginning of next year where teachers will be modeling these in the classrooms going over with students. We're going to have signage in our building posters in the hallway, in the cafeteria, on the buses, in the bathrooms of what the expectations are. So these were created again with teacher input um, and we wanted to make sure they were all expectations that could be easily learned from seventh grade to kindergarten as well as modeled so we can actually have the students model these behaviors. So that's kind of what we're going with expectations. Um, fair and appropriate consequences, a lot of this goes back to the restorative justice that we're working on, you know, trying to match the better words, the um, punishment with the crime, so to speak. Um, you know, if we have a student who's doing some graffiti, we've had some students that have actually gone up and cleaned some buses this year with parent permission as an appropriate punishment versus detention or suspension or other things. We thought like, if you're going to ride on bus seats, you can go clean the buses. And um, parents have been pretty open to that. Um, and then just quick to respond. If I get a phone call, you know, they're calling the office, we need you down here. Dawn and myself will down there pretty quickly. Just kind of do a lot of conversations with students, getting all the sides, giving them their due process, and then having that conversation. These are what the expectations are. You know, what can we do as administrators and teachers to help you meet those expectations? Changes for next year: um, the behavior expectations, which um, you've got a sheet on, instructional scheduling, um, primary reading, which we'll talk about, and then our dismissal procedures. <coughs> So we're going with a positive behavioral support idea for our um, discipline. It's a multi-tiered approach um, that, again, focuses on the positive behaviors that we want students to see and not the negative. So we're not going to tell a student, stop running. We're going to tell students, please walk in the hallway. So using that positive of what we want to see. And then looking at our discipline data from this year and looking at our students that we might need to put on a different tier. Maybe they need the extra supports. Uh, the goal of the matrix is to reach all students. But you're going to have those students that this probably isn't working for. They're still not meeting the expectations. Then what kind of plan, what kind of focus can we put into place and support to help the student meet the needs and the expectations? That's kind of where we're going with our behavior and discipline. Um, and again, those are the areas we're looking at. Classroom, hallway, cafeteria, playground, bus, restroom, and then all of the exploratories. Um, all of our expectations will address to be safe, be kind, and be responsible, which are our three goals at Rappahannock Elementary. Scheduling. Um, looking this year, two things we're really looking at scheduling for next year is getting the middle school students more on a block schedule in case the time ever comes where we need to borrow high school teachers to teach our core subjects. We use high school teachers currently to help with exploratory. Um, Colton Ball comes down for PE. We have uh, Sarah Moore comes down from farm to table. So we are borrowing for exploratory, but if we ever needed an English teacher to come down and help with a group that has an open period, our schedules are matching. Um, so if you look at the schedule, um, it's this sheet here. Sixth and seventh grade of the last two columns will kind of give you an idea of how we're looking at scheduling. Trying to get um, from third grade up at least 85 to 90 minutes of instruction blocks, three per day. They're going to have 90 minutes of English, 90 minutes of math, and then 90 minutes of history or science, depending on the AB day or if we do it semester based. So really focusing in on giving them uninterrupted instructional block. We've worked the schedule so that exploratory is not interrupting the block, what we've had to split in the past. They'll get two 90 minute blocks and then their exploratory lunch and then a recess period before they get the third block. So we want those blocks to be uninterrupted. That's where we're going with middle school. Um, for primary reading, if you look at the schedule, we've got all of our K-1 and 2, the first um, 90 minutes of the day is their reading block. We've done that strategically. What we're wanting to do is really go with an RTI model of instruction, where instead of having kindergarten reading, first grade reading, second grade reading, we're going to take those nine teachers and have nine reading level groups. 
So you would probably have kindergarten. You may have a kindergarten first grade group, and you might have a first grade second grade group, depending on the level. We wanted to spread it out among nine levels so that we can really hone in on all the students needing the same skills and the same instruction instead of having three reading groups in one class and you're trying to do stations and meet the needs. If we can hone in all those skills, we feel like we're going to do a better job of instructing. Um, what we're also doing for that first 90 minute block is all of our reading um, staff, Mrs. Todd, uh, paraeducators, our special ed staff, and our exploratory teachers, art, music, and PE. Um, e, are all going to be focused in on the reading classes in the elementary, in the primary level. Our goal is to have all of our kids reading by third grade. So they're going to get a lot of support during that first 90 minutes where they're all doing language arts and reading together. So it took a little while to adjust the schedule, getting feedback from teachers, um, exploratory lunches, trying to fit all that in. But we think we've come up with a good model that we're going to try. Um, we have a group that's going to a school in Madison next week that do an RTI model similar to this that we can observe and get some feedback and kind of come up with a plan before we start. So they've invited us, so we're excited to go down there and kind of see how they're doing with their reading. Um, flexible grouping. This won't start until after the first quarter. First quarter will be your standard reading group with your homeroom teacher. You can collect that data, see what level the kids are on, and then starting about October, we'll start splitting into the nine groups. And they're flexible, so if we have a student that's in group B and they are really, really performing and they're really catching on and they can very quickly move up to the next group uh, and shift around as needed. Dismissal. Um, one of the things, just meeting with teachers at the beginning of the year, what works here, what doesn't work, a lot of teachers don't like the double um, runs in the afternoon. It's very difficult when you've got half of your class getting on one run and you've got kids you're trying to monitor in the cafeteria. A lot of your younger kids are sitting and waiting. Um, so just talking with Mr. Tupper and transportation, they came down um, on one of our work days and did some measuring and we're going to have one bus run. All buses can fit at the elementary school at one time. So we're going to load all buses once, then they'll go to the high school and pick up. That gives the high school an extra 15 minutes of instruction. Um, and then we're not having our kids split and waiting for the second run. Then we can just have parents come right on through and pick up their kids after buses leave. So we're going to try that starting in the fall. So those are a few of the changes. Um, again, there's, I'm open for suggestions. I told my teachers at the beginning when I met. If you feel like there's something you want to try, but you're, you're scared to try it or it's never been done, go for it. If you fail, you fail. You're going to learn something. You're going to learn something about yourself as a teacher, or you're going to learn something about your students. Um, so they kind of have the freedom to kind of suggest things if it's not a big budget cost or something that you know screws up the schedule we've got this year go for it um, and so we're trying that as a staff and i think things have gone really well this year questions your can i ask a question yeah your rubric for behaviors and so forth and so on we are we going to publicize that before the beginning of next year absolutely that will go home in a parent letter um, in the summer the welcome back letter so parents will know what the expectations are. Um, and then we're going to hold at the beginning, probably not the first day because it's a little chaotic, probably the second or third day, um, grade level meetings where um, my assistant and I are going to meet with the whole team, all of the students, and kind of go through it and what we're looking for. We're also going to be tying in where right now we're awarding for good attendance. We're going to be doing some kind of incentive for good behavior. Students that are meeting the expectations, we're going to recognize them throughout the year. How are you doing attendance? I'm always worried about attendance. <laughs> how are we doing? Yeah, and now how, how, how are you rewarding for attendance? Gotcha. What we're doing um, this year, we're rewarding by quarter. Um, instead of being perfect, perfect attendance is here all day, every day. We're recognizing students that have perfect attendance. We're also recognizing students that have two or fewer deviations each quarter. So if you left early one day or you were absent a day because you were sick, you're still getting rewarded for coming and having good attendance. So we've got two different levels we've been doing each quarter. Do, do you get, uh, with regarding attendance, I mean, a lot of students feel like it's unfair because cause some kids get sick and they have to be absent and it might encourage someone to go to school sick. How, how do you? Well, and that's why, that's why we're recognizing with the two yeah. deviations. Yeah, so yeah. if you miss so, a day for sick, okay. we're not holding that, penalizing you yeah. when you miss a day, you don't get to participate. We're still rewarding those students and giving you that option of you know, being a little bit flexible, but still having some goals set. So it's, it's kind of a hit or miss. Perfect attendance is perfect. I'll, just, I'll tell you, 
a real quick story. I was principal in elementary school, and a woman came flying, and we did perfect attendance and good attendance. And flying in the office, the kid was sick as a dog. Said, my child is here, and then took the kid out and went home. All for perfect attendance. That was the last day we ever did perfect attendance. But I mean, it's, it, I think we need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. That some kids, some kids want that that award so bad that they'll go to school sick and then they spread it to everybody else. So it's just a thought. Mm -hmm. I have a question. In third grade, mm -hmm. you have from 12:50 to 1:10. Dear, mm -hmm. what is that? Drop everything and read time. There was an extra 10, 15 minutes in the schedule, so we put deer time. It may transition to where that will be uh, more of a test-taking strategy time since they're new to SOLs, okay. where they'll be spending that time working on some of that testing strategy. But the other grades don't have that. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's a, but they're that may cause a problem. Right. Your um, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh have longer exploratory blocks because of band. Oh, I see. 55. So they have a shorter explore. They have the regular 45 minutes, so that's where that extra time is. And then on the smaller grades, they have all the academics in the morning and then recess and dismissal and mm -hmm. something else in the afternoon. Correct. And that was from talking with teachers. That's yeah, kind of what no, they that's wanted. Probably good. It may be too much instruction in the beginning, but still. And that's why we tried to break it up with, um, after that first 90 minute block, their recess and lunch. And then they have um, math reading, and then they have a second recess. Yeah. So they're getting some breaks in there in between the long instruction blocks. Well, and the two breaks anyway. And we're doing aerobic instruction anyway. Brain breaks. That's right. Brain breaks. Did I get you? We're doing a lot of brain breaks, right? Especially early on. I'm glad to see that language arts and reading. Separate. Are separate yeah. units, mm -hmm. separate time frames. So many systems try to include language arts in the reading blocks, and that's just a, a, a formula for failure, I think. I have a question about um, the nine reading level groups, and mm -hmm. you're, you're indicating. I think you were saying that maybe your first and second grade blended group would happen, or mm -hmm. so maybe. In, I'm wondering, in terms of content, like. With a third grader reading with a first grader, for example, like how, how do you? Well, this is just going to be for K. <laughs> this is K first and second. K okay. one two. K one two. K one two. K mm -hmm. K Primary. Um, it, it'll be what's on their level. The new um, series that we have has the reading materials on different level, so you can have all nine reading groups reading the same material, but they correctly. The way they're reading is on their level. Um, we're not going to call it a first grade class, a second grade class. We're going to give them colors, numbers, letters, and animal names. Some things is that the students aren't realizing necessarily I'm in the low group. Um, we're not going to have a kindergarten with a second grade. That's too big of a gap. We're not going to have, you know, uh, because of maturity-wise, we're not going to have a second grader reading on a kindergarten. But those middle groups, you may have some really high first graders that could use a lower second grade group, you know, to be challenged. You may have a couple second graders, first graders this year that are going to second grade aren't quite ready. They may need to be reading with a first grade level group. Well, um, I think that there's an advantage to having a mixture of reading abilities within a classroom. That kids and there will be, they won't all be the exact same level, but we won't have quite the span that some of the teachers are dealing with now. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit more targeted and focused. Yeah. And for the identified gifted kids, there's, would that block come under the uh, exploratory or would that be in the grouping process it'll be in the grouping for instruction okay yeah the only group I think that we've got gifted are upper grades correct it means the Lilo so, so um, when they we identify as early as kindergarten depending right. on referrals but right. um, yeah when they start meeting those uh, third, grade, third grade and up three through seven and then there's both a general intellectual academic group and then there's an other group I think it's a good idea. I, like I mean, it. you can't learn to read if you're in the level and you can't understand anything. So it's and if we get those two teachers, we'll block it right up. That'll be awesome. That, oh, that was one thing too. You know, the, there was some discussion about the two teachers, mm -hmm. and it's, I don't think it's in the <coughs> budget that they are elementary first grade or elementary school. 
Well, I think there was talk about high school as well in the community. Just okay. I just remembered that. Mm -hmm. In the budget report, we um, talked about that because, yes, you're right. In the analysis we did, that's how we arrived at two positions was the analysis overall of the division. And then in talking with the administration and teachers and things, everybody um, was in agreement. We need to focus it in primary, especially for the reading groups. So that's where we'd like to put two additional teachers to help with this kind of RTI model. You can do more with more groups and also have a, additional uh, professional support. In those I think that will come up in the 23rd meeting. So I think that's an excellent idea. I think we need to <laughs> <laughs> address that <laughs> issue before that. Yeah. I'll wait out to go last. <laughs> and then another question I had, just because I have a school issue computer, I'm the only one up here with a school issue computer, and they're really slow at loading things, and I hear comments from kids. I'm curious, because of the new curriculum that has an online component, are we working with the technology to make it quick enough? Because this does not have a quick enough processor to, to, to get National Geographic rich graphics. Sure. I think that's hands. something that the school is working on <laughs> so currently. It's, well, like, and it's not so much computer, that they're going to have it's going to Our crash. devices are pretty good. Our connection speed has been an issue with um, accessing information quickly, like some of our Imagine Learning components and some of our online learning um, platforms, just because of the, the amount of speed really and material good. that's got to come mm -hmm. through. However, we have gone through with Chantel to do our fiber connection. But I so. think that this computer has a processor that. It's you have an different. older computer, I think. We may have to get you checked out with some new equipment. But, but, but our students have yeah, some pretty but, good. Uh, well, they have. They have the. Uh, because Mrs. Uh, Ms. Bullock told me this was the this was a current computer, and when I load things with my little four year old tablet, they load quicker. And so it's a, it's just a question. And my student, my kids who are students, do say that the computer crashes a lot when they're loading things in the class. So it's just something that I that frustrates them. Just like it frustrates them to wait in the bus line. It feels like waste of time. It's the same kind of thing. Like they want to be, they're sponges. They want to be doing something that's productive, and that technology piece would be a good thing. To Tablets work. definitely have more of a <laughs> yeah. speedy operating yeah, system exactly. than our regular laptops do. But we are always working on that, and I think the connection speed that we'll be getting is going to help so much mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, um, but it, it won't won't help if the internal part of the computer. Well, and those are on a cycle to be continuously yeah, upgraded. Yeah. Yeah. Things, so. Yeah. We'll do what we can. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. No, I just hope that we can troubleshoot that over the summer you know, rather than mm -hmm. um, in the first week of school. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Very proud of all the work being done at the elementary school. Pretty this exciting year. stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. it is great. Mm -hmm. All right. Did we abandon Holly? She's going to come in after a certain period of time. I told her to. There she oh, is. Here she comes. Hey. Are you good? Yes, I've got it all set. Right. <laughs> all right, our next item on the agenda is Assistant Superintendent Carol Johnson to go over our um, annual plan that goes along with our special ed flow through money, very important. I'm going to pull it from here just so I can make sure it's going to load up. Okay. It's going to work? It's going to work. Okay. All right. Um, we've been through this process for several years now <laughs> where I present the annual plan to you. So, um, Ms. Grimsley, if you would click on to the first slide, this is our standard statement of the reason why we are um, going over this grant. We're required to do it every year. So let's get into the nitty gritty in the next slide, which is where we actually break down the fines. Um, the special education flow through grant is broken into two categories with the section 611 category being for the bulk of our special education students. So that would be for the um, students who are pretty much kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, within the budget, we are looking to get this year $218,640. Um, if you take a peek at the bottom, that is $4,639 less than 
um, we had projected for last year's amount. So we did have a dip in our special education population last year. We went from around 125 students to 108 special education students. So the good news is, yay, we're not over-identifying, but the um, downside of that is you don't get quite as much money. So um, with the funds that we um, are receiving, we are looking to continue funding for two pair of professionals along with their benefits. 75% funding for our school psychologist. We'll continue funding our physical and occupational therapists through this. We'll also continue funding for counseling through the National Counseling Group. 25% of the position of executive director of special education and benefits. We also will have a private school set aside section this year. Last year we didn't have any private school students who were also special education who were um, on our caseloads. This year we had two, so we will need to set aside an amount of money to serve those students um, should they choose to accept those services. And then the last item, um, which I'll go into in a couple minutes, um, we would like to set aside a little bit of additional funding this year for materials to pilot a sensory lab. So moving on to the next slide, the other part of this grant is the Section 619 for the early childhood portion. This amount stays pretty much the same every year. This year, $6,308, which is actually a little bit more than we've received previously. So we will put aside $5,000 to help support our occupational therapists and physical therapists with the remainder of the money going towards materials and supplies for our younger students. So um, at this point, we also give an annual update on our special education advisory committee meet, or committee group that we have here. Um, our group has met three times thus far this year. Um, we got a little bit off track with some of the weather cancellations. So um, we did our first meeting in September. We actually had a great time out at the Rappahannock County Park. We invited um, Mrs. Angela Wood, who had spoken to the board about the dyslexia group that she was putting together. We invited her to be our guest speaker that evening so that she could share her information and um, look for some people who might be interested in joining her in her efforts. So had a great time with that. Um, the next meeting that we did, we actually reached out to Pizzi and um, that is the Parent Education Advisory Training Center. Um, they have an office up in Northern Virginia. They actually sent a representative who came and did a dyslexia simulation for us, um, which was very eye-opening. It gave us all an opportunity to see what it's, it feels like to be a child who has a, an issue with reading. Um, so uh, the next meeting we actually did just last week, um, that was... Uh, addressing special needs through active learning and sensory integration, which we actually had that meeting in our ABL lab um, with a presentation from Holly Jenkins and Jackie Tiedrick. Um, we had an excellent time with that and um, love to keep that collaboration going between SEAC and Commit to Be Fit. So our last meeting, we are planning for the month of May, which we are looking to do an end of year celebration and hope to go back to the park because that seems to be where everyone likes to go. So um, moving on to our accomplishments for this year, um, you may recall that we have a parent survey that we send to home. Um, it's actually a postcard that we give to parents. They go online and they can um, report on questions about our special education program and our advisory group. So we had more parents who responded this year. We actually had seven. Um, and I'm pleased to say that six out of these seven agreed that my child's school helped me become involved to improve services and results for my child um, with one person reporting neutral on that question. So we were pleased with those results. Um, we also met expectations on our special education performance report, which was posted in June of 2017. However, it was based on data from two years before. So this report pretty much tells um, everyone whether we're being compliant and meeting our timelines for eligibility um, and if uh, 
the, the reports that our parents give us and the identification of our students. Are we over identifying in specific categories? Are we disproportionate in the types of students that we're identifying? So we did okay on that. The only place that we've ever lost points in that report is million dollar question. Where's it at? SOL testing. <laughs> So that's the only place that we've lost points. However, we meet expectations um, for the overall report. Um, this year, we also did quite a bit of staff training in the dyslexia. And uh, I am proud this year that we were able to take an interest that we had from a parent and kind of morph it not only into something that we could help to educate our parents on, but that we could also start an initiative with our own teachers in our own buildings. So in October, we were able to send two teachers to a training in Northern Virginia for dyslexia, one special education teacher and our Title I reading interventionist. So they were able to come back and begin using those strategies in the building. Um, the wonderful thing about the program, and this is through the Orton-Gillingham Reading Program, um, is that by including special education and our Title I services, we've got an initiative that's not looking just at special needs students or students who are identified with dyslexia. It has strategies that can be used across the board to benefit all of our students. So once we had the two teachers that went, that sparked some enthusiasm for other teachers. So we were able to send another special education teacher from the high school in December who's been able to bring those strategies back to this building. Um, from there, we have um, actually made a connection with the GMU TTAC, the Training and Technical Assistance Center. And they had a representative who came and did staff development for us and gave, the, um, gave two presentations, mostly attended by the elementary school, on the multi-sensory reading approach, which is what the Orton-Gillingham program is all about. So that was some good, um, not only beneficial, but also free training that we were able to get. Um, Another positive this year, our inclusion percentages are continuing to go up each year. And what it looks at in what's called the December 1 report is the number of students that we have who are receiving special education services for 50% or less of the day. So if you have a good inclusion program, you're going to have fewer students who are in a special education classroom for over 50% of their day. So from 2016 to 2017, we saw an increase of 16.05% as far as our inclusion services going up for children. And that number has been increasing um, for the last several years. So um, our teachers in our schools are definitely um, taking advantage of that method. Um, and then last of all, we have our special games still going on. We've been able to connect with our athletic director this year. Um, he has actually done some time trials for our little guys who are going to be going. Um, the date is earlier this year. It's this coming Friday. We have a bus. We will be leaving around 8.15, 8.30. So anybody who would like to come to the special games at Culpepper will be meeting at We're elementary and then up here. This year is going to be at Eastern View High School. So it, uh, the time of the event is from 9 to around 1.30, if anyone's interested in coming. And the athletic director has volunteered to come, and he gets to put up the canopy for us. <laughs> so looking ahead, um, last year, this is the same slide that I put up for you last year of what I wanted to accomplish with the SEAC group for this coming school year or through our, our special education program. So the honest analysis, membership and attendance is still an issue. Our first meeting of our special education advisory group this year, we had probably 25 to 30 parents and children because we were at the park, we had free pizza, nice, warm, beautiful evening. The next meeting, I think I had four in attendance and then last week we had um, a parent and a child. 
So next month, with going back to the park, I anticipate that our we attendance will be up. We can close the park so you can meet in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> um, student participation, we do have a student member who's been attending our meetings this year. Um, increasing the presence of SEAC in the community. Um, we actually are scheduled to um, be with the Department of Social Services this coming Saturday. They have a um, child abuse awareness activity here at the high school and they invited um, us from the special education department to come as far as maybe early intervention strategies or assistance that we may be able to give to families. So, I'll be bringing all of my flyers with me and advertising at that this weekend. Um, enlisting a community sponsor, um, we've got to start in that. Of course, Headwaters is a sponsor for us in many ways, but um, we were actually approached this year from one of the Headwaters members, um, Rick Lazard, who has given an opportunity for some um, two of our teachers to go to a training this summer. And I'm sorry, was the school? Kildonan. The Kildonan School, which is located where? In New York. In New York. And they get a two-week vacation. Yeah. Um, two-week residency. And, and they will be learning about the Orton-Gillingham reading program from some of the experts. So that was something that was offered to us that would be funded um, through Headwaters. So we already have the two teachers ready to go to learn more about that reading program. So very excited with that. Um, we are continuing to integrate our efforts with Commit to be Fit. Um, that goes kind of along with our um, multi-sensory awareness because when we were in the ABL lab last week and really got to look at everything that they had in there, there are so many um, types of equipment, so many opportunities, especially for special needs students to be able to be active, to be able to get sensory input that will help them to be better students. Um, and kind of looking at the schedule, that program is just getting off this year at the elementary school level. And so a lot of the day the room is booked through the exploratory schedule. So in trying to um, schedule times maybe for a group of special needs students who just might need 20 minutes in the ABL lab to be able to use some of the equipment, the schedule is kind of hard to be able to work those students into it right now. So our goal is to set aside some additional money in our flow-through grant so that we can um, basically copy some of the equipment that's in the ABL lab. And then um, I'll be meeting with the principal at the elementary school to talk about some ideas of where we might be able to kind of have a separate location where special education students can use some of those same strategies. So um, Commit to be Fit Again has been a great partner for us. Um, we did have interest in an autism walk um, based on our um, attendance issues so far this year. We haven't really pursued the autism walk, but we will be designating an autism awareness week, which that will be this month because autism month is in April. All right, so looking ahead for next year, um, we will continue with our training. I received information from our representative from the TTAC last week that GMU is offering a free training and she um, gave us the opportunity to sign up for some teachers. Um, again, VDOE will be doing a separate training in Richmond this summer, so that will be a second opportunity. Um, the Kildown in School um, will also be looking at a pilot for a multi-sensory lab for our special education students. Um, we are going to revisit our meeting schedules for the advisory group next year. Um, we kind of decided on 6 o'clock evening meetings because that was working better for the parents at the time, but that doesn't seem to be working right now, so we'll take a look at that. Um, also, um, I will be asking teachers to help us to enlist new members. Sometimes that um, up and close one-on-one -on -one contact helps out. Um, looking for more community sponsors and um, a quarterly newsletter. So lastly, 
We have our proposed membership for the coming year. Um, this membership is, is pretty much the same as it has been. I do have one new member to add on there um, as of this afternoon. Uh, if you could add the name of Miranda Hope. And we'll be asking for your approval of this group for the advisory committee. So again, all of this is to help us to provide our free and appropriate public education for all of our students. May I answer any questions? Yes, sir. Carol, could, when you have committee members, could you note whether they're teachers or parents or just citizens or or whoever? I mean, I know one or two of these folks, but I don't know who the others are. Okay, well, and I can tell you um, the committee members, all of those people are parents with the exception of Jocelyn Alexander. She is our designated teacher representative. Okay. Committee members are only allowed to be parents or community people. Okay. So we have one teacher designated and then of course consultants. Okay. Well, at one time we had lots of parent teachers. Mm -hmm. Teachers that were parents. parents. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And yeah. so these are just citizens. citizens. Yes. Parents, right. Yes. Okay. And but actually I'll take the other two. Pardon? I'll take the others too. The parents. Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we, at one time, we were very heavy on the other yes. side. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. This will be an action item later. And the last item I have, just a real quick, um, the CTE annual plan also needs to be signed off. Um, doesn't need specific approval. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Do you yeah. have an action item later? Yep, yeah. yeah, to approve the annual plan that is due um, every April 30th. Um, and it's probably the federal program with the most paperwork for the least amount of money. That's right. <laughs> usually what I say about that one. Um, but our performance has been really great in CTE. We are always um, increasing our certifications that students attain. Um, performance went way up last year compared to the previous year. Um, just scanning. I'm the. This is the first year in seven years I haven't done this. For thirteen thousand one hundred and seventy-one dollars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so uh, it's looking good. Um, one thing I will say. Um, this year we added the CNA program, Health Sciences, we now have at the high school thanks to our partnership with RAPU. We use their facility to offer the lab experience and clinical lab experience that we need to have for those students and they will take, I think they take their exam this month. Yeah, they, yeah it's the end of the month. End of this month. So um, they will hopefully, and I think they're just a great group of girls, um, they they should pass and be certified nurse aides coming out right ready to go to work. If it's any indication the adults pass, they had a hundred percent pass rate in the adult class. Yes. Same right. curriculum. We worked same hand in exact hand with curriculum, them, so same that's teachers awesome. teachers to a lot of degree. Yeah. And our high school nurse is actually our CNA instructor. She went to a lot of trainings to be able to do that. Um, we received a Claude Moore grant to help get this program off the ground um, along with some of the CT money. It's not a lot as you can see. Um, but uh, it's been very, very successful. We look forward to expanding. And we also have sports med tech that's gone on and that we hope to expand more in the health sciences. In addition, next year we're also adding teachers for tomorrow. Very excited about that. We've been wanting to start that program for a while. Um, we talk a lot about um, additional endorsements for teachers because of the budget constraints we have. And now with the um, profile of a Virginia graduate having to offer so many different career options. So Danny Pond has stepped up to the plate and she's certified to teach teachers for tomorrow. So we'll be growing our own teachers oh, in a this. teacher shortage critical crisis time. Um, so we're very excited about that as well. So that's where CTE is going. So we'll ask for your approval on that plan too. So is we can get teacher, our 13 is teachers down. tomorrow, is that an elective or is it a is it, 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 it counts as a CTE class. So it gets it their career a, credential. Is courses. it a Neat daily class? Yes, it can be. 
You can, um, you or have some along. Days or something you like can, that. yeah, depending on what we can do. We, we really hope to work with the pre-K classrooms and have our students get real instruction and experience in early elementary education. Um, so we're really excited for the um, opportunities that we have right here because our classrooms are so close. So we can send our kids to get that experience they need. Um, and then they're, um, if they complete the sequence, then they come out with that background. Great way to coordinate with CCLC? Oh, we can, yeah. Um, if we need to. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's where our next career sequence is going. Okay. And that concludes the superintendent report. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Reports of headquarters representative. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I'm ready. Um, I would, yeah, I was at the March 19th meeting, and um, the spring after school program session started on March 20th. There are 30 or 40 kids enrolled, and there was some discussion about maybe getting rides home for the kids to try to expand how many kids could could um, could come. The starfish mentors met, met on March 20th, and they have 14 pairs now, which is a little bit of an increase, so it's good. And there's a new program that's uh, for, um, for parents of, and toddlers. It's really, it's called, called Romp and Ride, and there's, there are people, there are 70 interested people, um, and kids basically just get together and socialize, and, and it's part of the, the Read for the Wrap Today, Read Tomorrow program. That's, that's been really quite popular. And the summer chorus is still getting plugged, runs June 18th to 29th from noon to 5. And we're hoping to divide into two age groups. And the big money from Headwaters, Headwaters are giving out an, an impressive $93,000 in scholarships this year. Wow. Which is more than usual because there's an additional $40,000 in scholarship money because of the 20th anniversary. No, it's because we won the prize. Oh, because you won the prize. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's because, because Mr. Grove is going to Italy. <laughs> so, but, um, no, but that, yeah, that it, did, it's a huge If I get it, 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 that includes yeah. youngsters that have graduated from high school and are right. in college or going from junior or from two-year schools to four-year schools and I think the school system did a great job of notifying those kids that these scholarships were available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's yeah. something that uh, it's a great our family is very happy about. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> well, we did not meet, but we meet on the 19th. Uh, Moving on to public comments, anybody would like to address the board this evening? Anyone? We're all talked out after all the public hearings. <laughs> um, the approval of the CTE local plan, is there a motion to uh, accept the CTE local plan as it's presented this evening? So moved. Second. Second. Motion for Mr. Grove, second Mr. Ubin. <coughs> Any discussion? A lot of work. No for money. a little bit of money. <laughs> it's 13 grand. 13 hey, grand. We do it. We do it. There's, a, there's a lady that I used to work with who told me, uh, pennies make dollars, yeah, that's dollars right. make hundreds. Exactly. There she is. There, there, she, is. there she is. There she is. There she is. Every dollar is All in favor, right? Aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's ordered. And the SPED plan uh, to include the proposed 1819 membership as presented this evening. Is there a motion to approve mm -hmm. the SPED plan? So moved. We have a motion from Mr. Rubin. Second. We have a second. This bottom. Any discussion? Thanks for doing that, girl. It's a lot of work. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. And so ordered. New business. Is there any new business? We need to plan uh, according to our timeline. We need to plan. The board needs to plan to get together to. Um, to uh, put together the superintendent's uh, annual assessment uh, so that we are ready to present it by the May meeting. By the May meeting. So uh, I ask you all to make sure you're prepared to give some dates um, that we could meet. Uh, I'm going to propose next Tuesday at 6.30. Can you tell me if your head's nodding or not? Is your head nodding? I'm good. Yeah. Okay, so next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at the school board office, 
That's the 17th. The 17th, right? Okay. Yeah, that's good. 17th. We're going to be at the school board office at 7 o'clock. No, 6.30. 6.30. That's what I have now. And the, for the sole purpose of assembling the superintendent's assessment. Um, and we will come together and call ourselves to order, go immediately into closed session uh, for that purpose, come out of closed session with no actions that evening. It's strictly our annual writing assignment. Um, but we still need to announce that it is a meeting. We have sufficient time. It's also tax day. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, uh, superintendent is going to provide us uh, some backup material uh, this evening during closed session, and uh, we'll have time to uh, do some homework before we get there. Uh, so, look forward to seeing you all there. Uh, so that's on the 17th. Uh, the public hearing on the school. Budget is the 23rd of April mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. at the elementary school. Uh, things look very promising at this point uh, for our proposal. And so uh, if you would agree, you need to come and uh, support the school budget. If you disagree, you need to come and voice your opinion. Um, but uh, April 23rd at 7 p.m. at the elementary school. At the elementary school. We, we did put budget copies out at at uh, Sperryville Trading, and, and Eric said they were gone in two days. Uh, and so, they put some out at the pub as well, and they were gone the next day. So. Yeah, and we should have a stack ready for that hearing night as well. Okay. I put them around um, at the post office as too. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Great. Our next regularly scheduled meeting, I didn't look it up before I started here. May. May the 8th, 6 30 p.m. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session um, this evening. I move the board convene into closed session for the following purpose. Discuss and consider the appointment of staff for coaching and classified positions. Discussion personnel number 2017-18-04 uh, and discussion of superintendent's evaluation pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion. That's grow. Second, Mr. Cuban. <coughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Please no. It's order. We're going to take a short recess to say good evening to you. If you want to hang around, we're going to be 20 minutes, and uh, we'll come out. We'll make uh, a motion concerning the personnel uh, report. And everybody needs to take a cupcake oh, home. Take a cupcake. Larry's birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Happy birthday, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yeah.